Hey, this is Sean from the product team here at Soundcraft, coming at you with another edition of our how-to video series on SI consoles. Today, we're gonna to be discussing Visi Remote and setting it up with your SI console. Soundcraft's Visi Remote app is an iOS app for iPads, which allows remote control of an SI console. With Visi Remote, you can do things like ring out your monitors, mix from anywhere in the venue within Wi-Fi coverage, use the meters page as a meter bridge extension of your console, or even allow musicians to do their own monitor mixes. Busy Remote is a very powerful add-on to any mixing environment or application. So now that we know some of what Busy Remote can do, how can we use it? Let's take a look. To start, we'll need a version 2 iPad or later, a wireless router, and a network cable to connect the console to your router. On the rear of SI Expression, SI Performer, and SI Compact consoles, is a HiQnet port. HiQnet is a Harman developed communication protocol which Harman devices such as Crown amplifiers, BSS Soundweb London devices, and Soundcraft mixers use to communicate to each other. So to start, make sure everything is powered off. It, boot order is a very important aspect which we'll explain more later. Next, connect your network cable to the HiQnet port of your SI console and connect the other side of your network cable to your wireless router. Now we have to configure our wireless router. Routers vary depending on make and model, so please consult your user manual of your router to follow the steps ahead. However, there are two aspects that we must get right. Our IP settings and our UDP configuration or port forwarding. The first thing we're going to cover is IP settings. Most wireless routers come out of the box with DHCP enabled. DHCP is a way of your router automatically configuring all your IP settings for all your devices within your network. This is the easiest way to set up and also the recommended method. If you use the DACP method for IP settings, then you can move on to the next stage of setup. Now, if you don't want to use DHCP addressing or for some reason cannot use DHCP, you must set up manual IP addresses. That's fine and we can do that. However, make sure you're familiar with IPv4 standards and make sure that your network is on the same subnet. If you're confused about that, read up on IP and how, uh, and how manual addressing works. However, if you don't configure the IP addresses correctly, meaning giving each device on the network a unique address, and also make sure that all devices are on the same subnet, your iPad and your console will not be able to talk to each other. Now we have to go on to the next bit of router setup, enabling our UDP communication or port forwarding. There are two types of internet traffic, TCP and UDP. TCP is a two-way flow of information where uh, two devices have to be linked with each other. This is how most controls on Visi work. For instance, when I move a fader on our Visi remote, it should move the fader on the console as well. And also, it must work the other way. If I move a fader on the console, Visi must also show that change. This is why we use TCP for most controls of, on Visi remote. However, the console's metering is a bit different. Because all the metering comes from the console and Visi does not change the actual meters, we can use UDP, which is a one-way uh, flow of information and a much more efficient way of packing data. This is why we must enable our UDP connection in our wireless router. So let's do that. Most routers have UDP enabled out of the box. However, some routers do not. Sometimes UDP ports are closed due to security concerns. However, we advise that Visi Remote users employ a dedicated network for their consoles and Visi Remote rather than a network that is connected to the internet and has other traffic. We recommend this to ensure the most reliable and secure connection possible. To enable UDP on your router or set a port forwarding, consult your network router's setup guide. Currently, Visi Remote uses port 3333 to send its meter data. So in your router's control panel, Make sure that port 3333 is open and port forwarding is enabled. Now that we have our router set up properly, now we should boot up our SI console. Once your console has booted up, enter the system menu. From here, scroll down to the network settings. This is where we configure the IP settings of the console. If you're using DHCP on your router, simply set the console to DHCP and everything will be automatically configured. If you are using manual IP addressing, 
Make sure your IP addresses are unique for each device on the network and make sure that your devices are on the same subnet. If you make any changes to the IP settings of the console once it's booted, you must reboot the console for those IP settings to take effect. Bearing this in mind, it's important to set up your IP settings before you have to start your event or else you'll have to reboot your console and you know, won't have audio playing at your event. The next setting we have to look at on the console is high QNET addressing. Going back under the system menu, below network settings are the console's high QNET settings. First thing we have to do is make sure high QNET is enabled. The second thing we have to do is set the high QNET address of the console. It doesn't matter what address you set. All that matters is that it is a unique address. Every high QNET enabled device on the network must have a unique high QNET address. If two devices have the same address, they will not be able to communicate. Once we've configured the IP settings and the high QNET addressing on the console, we can move on to setting up our iPad. So let's do that. Firstly, make sure you have Busy Remote downloaded and installed on your iPad. Next, we're going to go to the iPad settings. Once you're in the iPad settings, go to the Wi-Fi settings and connect to the same network the console is connected to. Now click the eye icon to configure your IP settings. Again, if you're using DHCP, all the IP settings will be automatically configured. If you are using manual addressing instead, select the static setting and put in your IP address, subnet mask, and other relevant settings. Again, here incorrect settings will result in your iPad not being able to communicate with your console if you are in static IP mode. The final thing we have to do is set the high QNET address of the iPad. Again, here it does not matter what address you set. All that matters is that it is a unique address from other devices on the network. If your console and the iPad have the same high QNET address entered, they will not be able to communicate to each other. Once all this is done, we are ready to launch the Visi Remote app. If you have done all the settings correctly and your console is on, you will see your console appear automatically in the devices list. Click your console in the device list and watch Visi Remote update with all your console settings. And watch Visi's meters start to display data if your console has audio running through it. Now you are ready to mix wirelessly. A couple quick points about using Visi Remote. First of all, you can use one iPad with multiple consoles. So to do this, just simply go to the Devices tab on Visi Remote and select the console you'd like to control. It will bring you to that console and it will populate all the controls. If you want to go back to another console, go back to the Devices tab and select another console. Now you can also use multiple iPads with a single console. A great example of this is to allow musicians to do their own monitor mixes. So the way to do that is very simple. Just make sure your IP settings uh, are correct and that all your high QNET addresses are unique uh, and you can use several iPads with one console. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching this edition of our how-to video series. Check back for more updates by liking us on Facebook and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Until next time.